in your book, you talk about finding balance. And this was such a a sweet chapter. I want to read a little excerpt. Um, so, so you talk about finding balance and, and you talk about being in San Francisco and there's an earthquake and you're in a high rise hotel or something. And it's, and it, this, this building is sort of designed for earthquakes. So you're moving a lot and it's intense. Will, Will you set the stage for us before I read this excerpt? What was it like to be in that building? So this was a very tall skyscraper and it was um, an office building with these fantastic windows of the entire Bay And I've been up there many times before. And then this earthquake started and the structural engineering on this building is meant to allow the building to sway with the seismic waves. Because if not, over will go the building. And that um, that became a metaphor to me about what it means to you know to be resilient. And up until that point, I thought, well, you know, if you have if you have something come at you, you need to have that fight and fear response and get rigid and hunker down. Like if that building had hunkered down, that we would have all gone over. So. You know, I think I talk in the section you're going to read about sort of learning to be more like a weeping willow and learning to have this kind of flexibility that will allow me to be resilient and um, and thrive in the end, something like that. Yeah. So you you said I survived, obviously, climbing back out from under a desk once the the tembler stopped. I'll skip more of the engineering gobbledygook, but that earthquake revealed to me that balance is not about stability or rigidity, but the ability to yield and move. My 60s are no time to mindlessly swallow the bromides of our day, which I've learned can be as unbalanced a diet as any. Whether it's falling in a yoga class or falling short in life, I can see more clearly now that the coveted state of balance is not about stasis or symmetry, but flexibility and change. I love this. So I wanted to say that your book is just such a great opportunity for all, us all to sort of weather these earthquakes that come with life. No matter how old you are, you face, you face challenges and you know, a good life will teach us how to respond to those and give us a little bit more um, you know, experience uh, as, as we get into the next set of them. And there's no reason to think that they are going to end. And often, you know, like an earthquake, there's really nothing that you can do to prevent that. But what you can do is do the work within yourself to be adaptable, to be flexible, to not have a fear response and to, you know, to grasp it in some way and, um, and to go forward with that. Oh, just like the engineers built that building, you have some, some element of control to sort of build a healthier, a healthy lifestyle for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and one, one point I make in the book that, that matters a lot to me is that in this culture, we have really conflated being older with being sick. Yeah. And, um, and as though they're both bad. Yeah. And, you know, I'd take a, I'd really take exception to that because that is, that is one of the bromides of, of this time. And, you know, being older, you know, is not bad. And in fact, is good. Like, like you know, and, or, or it's, you know, sort of neutral free, but, you know, there is the experience, there's the wisdom, um, there's the, um, you know, the nature of being a perennial and, um, and, and having those kind of connections that you know, they get overlooked in the imagery that we see, you know, I was just going through some things this morning and a friend of mine thought this was really funny. And it was, it was, the text was, how does grandma delete a friend on Facebook? And then the image is her iPhone and she's got the white out and she's, you know, oh. and you know, I thought that is so not funny. That is so mean, you know, perpetuating, you know, the stereotype that, that anyone over 50s, you know, and then can poop when it comes to technology and, you know, and so on. And it's not as though, I mean, I have a really good sense of humor. And uh, so I, you know, I could see where somebody thought that, you know, was funny, but we need to look a little bit deeper at these, at these things as well. And, and see there's, there's subtext and, you know, there are stereotypes and, and they're actually wrong and hurtful. 